Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths, I work in Power Systems, Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this movie we'll be looking at shared storage pools, phase 4, at a hands-on level. Hopefully you've already just seen the theory and concepts movie for phase 4, so I won't be explaining what's going on, just actually showing you what the commands are like, and you'll find that it's surprisingly easy. The three big features in SSP4 are removing a LUN from a shared storage pool, not very exciting, but it's nice to know it's there. The big one is the pool mirroring option for resilience, so we can put the disks on two different subsystems and carry on even if one fails. Also we have two new commands, the PV command for controlling the LUNs in the pool and the LU command for controlling the virtual disks. We'll look at both of those. And just to answer the two most uh, common questions we get is are my disks supported? Well if they're supported by the VO server then they're good for shared storage pools. And how do I get shared storage pools phase 4? Well they're delivered with the VO server 2, 2, 3 or above. In our demonstration then we're going to be using this configuration. We have two machines, the Power 6 called Silver and Orange, the VO server on each. We also have two of the Storewise V7000 machines and a bunch of LUNs on them. We're going to zone in those so that they're connected to both of the VIO servers so we can create an SSP. Then I run the cluster create command, cluster name Globular and the storage pool name Pacific. I've given it to repository disk and we're going to ignore repository disk for the rest of the uh, time here. Then we're going to have some storage pool disks, um, 31 and 32 in this example. We'll actually have a look at the names when we actually get some hands on. And then we give it the uh, host name of the VO server we're actually running this command on. And we created a shared storage pool accessing a couple of those disks. I then had to run the cluster add node command uh, to add in my second VO server and now we have a genuine a cluster of VO servers. I've actually created some clients on both the silver and the orange node and uh, given them some disk space and we can see at the moment my stor shared storage pool is only using two of my disks on one of my VE7000s. Then I'm going to use the failure group command to create this uh, mirror onto my other V7000 and uh, so we're now in a nice protected environment. Then we're going to add with the PV command some extra uh, physical volumes, the LUNs, and we'll see that the uh, IO then spreads across um, all these disks. Then we're going to use the LU command to allocate some thick and thin provisioning space, map it to our clients in just a second. So here we are on the machine, um, it's called Orange and this is the uh, VO server 1, logged in as padmin and I'm at uh, VO server 223, the iOS level command. Now let's uh, investigate our machine, a couple of standard commands. First we'll use the cluster minus list and it tells me my cluster is called globular. Uh, the next thing we want to do then is to find out some more about that particular uh, cluster name and we use the cluster status here, but we need the name globulars, so that's why we ran the previous command. It took a little while, if you notice, to come out, because it's actually checked around the various VIO servers to make sure that it understands the uh, current state. We only have two online here, Silver VOS 1 and Orange VOS 1. Um, if we had a cluster of 16 that we can do now, uh, that would take a little bit longer to go around the cluster. All right, next we want to do the same command again, but this time with verbose at the end. So again it'll go around asking for information. I'll scroll back here. So we've got globular, we find there's a repository, we have two nodes, we've seen that already. Uh, the pool is called uh, Pacific and it's not mirrored so we haven't got that second failure group backing the uh, the disks up, the LUNs up. And we can see here the uh, silver and orange VO servers um, again, we can see the status looks good. Uh, here we can actually find out what level we're at. Uh, this verbose command is particularly good when we're upgrading our VIO servers in their cluster. And this will tell us which ones are um, back level. So we can complete the upgrade. Then we find that the new function suddenly st starts working when they've all got up to the, uh, the right level. Also notice down the bottom in here that this uh, our orange VO server is this DBN. This is the database node. This is the one that does the uh, writing to uh, the important information in the cluster. Let's clear the screen. The list cluster minus D gives us a description of all the disks as seen by all the VIO servers. Let's scroll off the top if we go back a bit. 
again we can see we have uh, two nodes uh, connected and working so from the orange machine is using HDisk 7 and 8 HDisk 11 is the repository disk but if we go to the silver node then it's 6 and 7 instead of 7 and 8 and uh, HDisk 10 is the repository node very nice way of finding out what the disks are all called on the various nodes so we don't make some ghastly mistake by assuming they're all numbered the same let's clear the screen and we'll use the uh, the new PV command. A lot of the commands have a, a minus list option, so it's easy to remember. So again, we have a specific up in here, and we can see on orange it's HD7 and 8. We actually want to find out what uh, disks we could be using because we want to add this failure group. So um, if you can't remember the options, just PV will give us the uh, little hint there. So there's add, remove, replace, list, and uh, down in here is PV list capable so these are the disks that is found on orange that are also available on all the other nodes uh, in the cluster now if we look at some of these numbers in here and here we can see these numbers here represent the uh, manufacturer and the actual uh, number is for a particular disk subsystem this is my uh, v7000 in here the first one and then i have uh, another one down in here with a different number this is my second v7000 so this is the one i want to put my uh, new data on for my failure group so i need uh, h disk 12 and 13 for my failure group let's clear the screen Let's have a quick look at the uh, failure groups. We have the minus list. And again, we have a pool, Pacific, and we have one failure group called default. This is what you get when you run the uh, cluster create command, and uh, it's online, and this is the size of this is the, uh, the two disks at uh, 128 gigahertz. Okay. If we forget what uh, we're trying to do, we're going to run. The actual command and it gives us um, all the details you have to have to ignore all this cluster name and storage pool as it's redundant in this release until we have multiple clusters and multiple pools but otherwise the, uh, the information is all in here all right let's clear the screen and actually create that first failure group so here's my failure group create command this will create my mirror fg for the failure group this is the failure group name in here that i'm going to use uh, done is apparently a color. My sound administrator finds these peculiar colors for me. So there's an education. And notice the um, colon in here. This, this finds the uh, the name. And then hdisk12 and oops, 13. So off we go. While that's running, I've gone to another screen here. And we can see the failure group list. It's created the uh, done. Uh, it's the same size because all my disks are the same size and the same number of them and it's uh, online at the moment. So this is looking good. I do have four or five copies of AX installed and using the pool so it really did have to move some data, it took just over a minute. While it's doing the mirroring it will be marked up as in a degraded state instead of online and as soon as the mirrors are good it will go back to the online state. With the reverse command in here, we've got a summary of our two failure groups in here called default and v7000 done. Well, I don't like this one called default, um, so we can actually just do a, a rename of that now. And we're going to use the failure group modify. This is the only thing I think we can modify. We give it the name default, and we're going to change the attribute, the failure group name, to v7000 tan, which is the actual name for the other unit. So let's clear the screen and that's it with failure groups um, create the second mirror and uh, rename it and we're done there's a remove option but we don't want to try that now we only just got it working let's have a look at the PV minus list option now and now we can see our two failure groups V7000 and done and we can see the disks assigned to those 
um, all online, all the same size, so the two mirrors are the same size. This is looking really good. You can also see here these uh, part number in here and here are different. So all our discs on the two different systems all matched up nicely. Missing out here is actually the uh, the LUN number. If we do a minus verbose option, we can see those extra numbers um, at the end of the line. Okay, let's uh, clear. If we go back to the capable list, uh, we'll find there's less discs out there. This one here in two uh, gigabytes is a spare repository disc, and I'll create another movie on recovering from repository disk failures. So we'll ignore that one. Um, we find if you look at the two numbers in here again, there's two disks on the uh, TAN V7000 and two disks on the DUN V7000. So I want to add these as uh, two pairs into my two failure groups. So we're going to use the PV minus add command. So here's the command PV add failure group and we're going to have the, the name in here V7000 TAN and uh, colon, space and some disks. Then we have the uh, other failure group name, V7000 done, colon. Note I have missed uh, the space out in here, uh, that doesn't matter. It will work that out. And the H disk 14 and 15. Be very careful that you get things right. Now, these are nicely in the order and things. Um, if it's a more complicated scenario, that's why you might want to use the minus file option and put these lists of disks um, into a file so you can double and triple check that they're okay. Okay, we'll run that and we're then going to give another quarter terabyte mirrored into our pool. Okay, it's gone in nicely and we'll try our list command again. And we can see our pool with our disks all nicely in there and everything's online. If we do the uh, same with the minus verbose, it will zoom off the screen, but you can see here the uh, 57, 56, 55 are the LUN numbers as you see on the disk subsystem. I'm not going to cover the PV um, remove command um, as our cluster here is fairly empty, uh, that'd be pretty quick and uh, unexciting. Um, if you're pool is very full um, and you're doing lots and lots of I.O. that could take some time and the PV minus replace uh, very similar technology we had in previous release. Right now let's have a look at the logical unit function LU. Um, this is my HMC I want some disk space now for uh, Orange 5 I'm about to install a copy of ARX I clicked on this thing and here and I got the panel up virtual adapters here's my SCSI virtual SCSI on the client side the uh, on the VO server side it's here and so here's this uh, adapter slot number. If we now go to the VIO server, so on the VIO server, Orange VIO server one, I want to find the um, that uh, adapter number, and it will appear as uh, C15. And uh, I just tend to use a fairly grubby technique in here. So here's the, the virtual and the uh, adapter number, and here is the virtual host, the virtual SCSI that I need to connect my disks to. Now we want to um, run that command to create some space. LU create, uh, give it a name, this is just my convention in here. Uh, I've seen all sorts of strange things being used uh, uh, for real. Let's give it uh, 64 gigabytes and we'll connect it to VHOS 3. There we go. Let's do that again for a second disk. Uh, this time it's for the data rather than the operating system. Let's use time to find out how long it took. Okay, 0.6 of a second. Not bad going. I think that's the fastest disk allocation and mapping we can see anywhere else on the planet. We can, if you want to, do that in two steps. So I'll create a, a 5C um, without mapping that to a particular client. Now quite what we've done at this point, look at that, point none of a second, um, is we've just allocated some space but it's thin provisioning so we actually haven't done that yet at all but at least we have this thing that we could attach somewhere. Um, and then we can run the map command. We don't need the size and we can add the minus V adapter. 
that's right. Okay, half a second. Um, let's run the LU list again, and we can see a little bit mixed up. Um, there's uh, there's five A and B and C, all at sixty four gigabytes. Now, if I run another, say, of the create five B commands with the same name in here. Um, will we get away with that? Well, yes we do. So we actually have two of them now. LU list. We have a 5B here and a 5B here. Now what happens if we do an LU minus remove? First thing I have to do is get the syntax right. It's a good reminder if you just type in LU, you get all the syntax out. Okay, it says, hang on, you got two of these, I don't know which one to delete. So, a uh, little bit stuck there. What happens if we want to uh, remove that last one here that we created? Well, it's then we have to use these uh, UDID numbers instead. So, we'll put instead of here. So giving it the name, we can use this great big ID, and off we go. Clear the screen. If we use the uh, LU minus list minus verbose, we find all the information we can find out of our, our logical units, our virtual disks, and um, a lot of it's repeated because uh, this is the uh, pool actually in here. Um, the formats are a bit painful. If you had lots of them, it zoomed off the screen. And um, if you don't like the LU uh, list option, you can see in here we have um, space used and unused and thick and thin provisioning. And that's not actually here. Um, so we can write our own reports uh, by using the minus field option. And we can um, decide how we want to see the output. Okay, and we'll build the screen. So here's the LU list field. Uh, these are the names I've copied straight out of the uh, verbose option as the, uh, the names of the fields. And the format in here, various options. There's only about six or seven different characters you can use. Uh, this one on the colon make more sense to me than the others. So we'll quickly just run that command. And we can see down here the all the output and um, comma separated. Um, here's the uh, snapshot for example um, not very pretty so um, we could quickly build a script and uh, use a bit of um, orc and things to sort that out so let's do that now command piped into orc we have uh, a header printed out here and then we printed out the things in formatted nicely well that's the way I like to see the data with a minus field option and a script of course you can have the report that you want don't forget though, sometimes you want to see the overall view of the uh, pool and back to the lssp command that's been around quite a long time. Here we can see then the uh, name and the size, half a terabyte, synced. So that means that uh, our mirrors are in good state and then we can see how much is free, how much we've allocated and um, if we're actually over committed and we are now by 55 gigabytes. Well that's it for my video looking at Shared Storage Pools Phase 4. Hopefully that will get you started. You can find the other movies about Shared Storage Pools or invent a lot of other subjects about Power, Power VM, AX, Performance Tuning and Enmon at youtube.com slash Nigel A.R. Griffiths. I also regularly tweet about these technical subjects as Mr. Underscore Enmon and this tinyurl.com slash airexpert is where you can find my blog where I'll give you more up-to-date information as we go along.